What is Flutter, and how does it differ from traditional Android app development? Flutter is an open-source UI software development kit created by Google. It enables developers to build natively compiled applications for mobile, web, and desktop from a single codebase. Unlike traditional Android app development, where UI components are built using XML and Java Kotlin, Flutter employs a reactive and declarative approach using a widget-based system. Widgets in Flutter are self-contained UI elements that compose the app's interface, allowing for more flexibility, rapid development, and consistent design across platforms. Additionally, Flutter's Hot Reload feature speeds up development by instantly reflecting code changes in the running app. Enhancing the development experience compared to the more incremental build process of traditional Android development. Why is Dart programming used in Flutter instead of other programming languages? Dart programming is chosen for Flutter due to its specific advantages for building UI frameworks and applications. Dart is optimized for Flutter's reactive and declarative UI paradigm. It offers features like a just-in-time, JIT, compiler for fast development cycles with Hot Reload, aiding rapid iteration. Dart's Ahead of Time, 80, compilation ensures high-performance production apps. Its strong type system and modern syntax help catch errors early, enhancing code quality. Additionally, Dart's single-threaded event loop aligns well with Flutter's UI architecture, simplifying concurrency and UI updates. These factors collectively make Dart an ideal choice for crafting efficient and expressive UIs in the Flutter framework. What is the build context in Flutter? Build context is a crucial object in Flutter that provides information about the current widget's location in the widget tree. It's used to access the theme, find ancestor widgets, and perform navigation, among other tasks. How can you persist data locally in a Flutter app? You can persist data locally in Flutter using methods such as Shared Preferences for simple key-value pairs SQLite Database for structured relational data storage Hive, a lightweight NoSQL database for faster operations File.io for storing and reading files locally How can you optimize the performance of a Flutter app? To optimize Flutter app performance Use const constructors for widgets. Minimize unnecessary rebuilds using const and final variables. Utilize listview.builder and gridview.builder for efficient lists and grids. Implement proper state management to reduce UI updates. Leverage the Flutter dev tools for profiling and identifying bottlenecks. How do you handle platform-specific code or integrations in a Flutter app? Flutter provides platform channels to call native code from the platform. Use method channel or event channel to communicate with Android iOS APIs. Platform-specific widgets like Platform View integrate native views seamlessly. How you would request and handle permissions, such as camera, location, or storage, in a Flutter app for both Android and iOS. In Flutter, you can use the permission handler package to request and handle permissions on both Android and iOS. You would check the current permission status using this package and request permissions if needed. For example, to request camera permission. What are the different ways to distribute a Flutter app on both the Google Play Store, Android, and the Apple App Store, iOS? For the Google Play Store, Android, you generate an APK or app bundle from Flutter using Flutter Build APK or Flutter Build Up Bundle, then upload it to the Play Console. For the Apple App Store, iOS, you use Xcode to build an IPA and submit it to App Store Connect. The review process differs between platforms, with Apple having stricter guidelines. How does the process differ between the two platforms? How would you integrate a native feature, example, using platform-specific APIs, available on Android and iOS into a Flutter app? To integrate platform-specific APIs, use platform channels in Flutter. Define methods in Dart and implement them in native code, Swift Obj C for iOS, Java Kotlin for Android. For instance, to access a device's battery level. Scenario, you are working on a Flutter app that needs to manage the state of a shopping cart. Users can add items to the cart from different screens. How would you implement a robust state management solution for this scenario? To manage the shopping cart state, I would use a state management solution like Provider or RiverPod. I'd create a cart provider that holds the cart items and exposes methods to add, remove, or update items. This provider can be accessed from different screens using provider.of, 
or consumer widgets, ensuring consistent and synchronized card data. I would also consider using Change Notifier to minimize unnecessary UI updates and improve performance. Scenario Your app needs to fetch data from a REST API and display it in a list view. How would you handle API integration, asynchronous operations, and UI updates in Flutter? For API integration, I would use the HTTP package to make HTTP requests to the REST API. I'd perform asynchronous operations using async await and future based programming. Once data is fetched, I would parse it using Dart's built in JSON package. To update the UI, I'd use the Future Builder widget to handle the async response and display the data in a list view. You are building a multi screen Flutter app with different navigation requirements, including tab based navigation and navigating to a new screen when a list item is tapped. How would you set up navigation between these screens efficiently? For tab based navigation, I'd use the tab bar and tab bar view widgets within a default tab controller. To navigate to a new screen from a list item tap, I'd use the navigator class with the navigator.push method, passing relevant data to the destination screen using arguments. Scenario, your app requires smooth animations for various UI elements. How would you implement animations in Flutter, considering performance and user experience? For smooth animations, I'd use the animation class along with widgets like animated container, animated opacity, and Hero for shared element transitions. To ensure performance, I'd optimize animations by using physics-based animations, example, tween with curve animation, limiting unnecessary rebuilds, and avoiding heavy computations during animations. Your app needs to store some user preferences locally, such as dark mode preference or user login status. How would you utilize local storage in Flutter to achieve this? I'd utilize the shared preferences package to store user preferences like dark mode and login status locally. This package provides a simple key value store for persisting lightweight data. You're working on a project that demands a unique UI component not covered by Flutter's built-in widgets. How would you create a custom widget while ensuring reusability and maintainability? For creating a custom widget, I'd follow the composition principle, breaking down the widget into smaller, reusable components. If the custom widget is complex, I'd create a separate Dart file for it, following proper folder structure. I'd design it with customizable parameters and make it flexible to adapt to different use cases. Quality assurance is crucial for your app's success. Describe your approach to testing in Flutter, covering unit tests, widget tests, and integration tests. I'd adopt a test-driven development, TDD, approach. For unit testing, I test individual functions and classes using the test package. For widget testing, I'd use the Flutter test package to test UI components in isolation. For integration tests, I'd use the Flutter driver package to simulate user interactions across multiple screens. Your app should offer a consistent user experience across different devices and orientations. How would you implement responsive design principles in Flutter? To implement responsive design, I'd use Flutter's layout widgets like Media Query, Layout Builder, and flexible to adapt UI elements based on device size and orientation. I'd also use Orientation Builder to handle changes in screen orientation. Your app needs to perform periodic background tasks, such as updating data from a server. How would you implement background tasks in Flutter while considering battery efficiency? I'd use the Flutter Work Manager package to schedule and execute periodic background tasks. This package allows running tasks even when the app is in the background, ensuring data updates while considering battery efficiency by specifying appropriate constraints. You've identified performance bottlenecks in your Flutter app. What techniques and tools would you use to optimize the app's performance and ensure smooth user interactions? To optimize performance, I'd use the Flutter DevTools to identify bottlenecks. I'd analyze and reduce unnecessary widget rebuilds using const constructors and value key. I'd also use the ListView.Builder and GridView.Builder for efficient list grid rendering. For complex UI, I'd implement the sliver widgets with custom scroll physics. Your app is gaining users globally and needs to support multiple languages. How would you implement internationalization and localization in Flutter? I'd use the INTL package to implement internationalization and localization. I'd define localized strings, format numbers, dates, and currencies based on the user's locale. 
I'd use the localizations delegate to load the appropriate language resources. Scenario. Users of your app encounter occasional errors, such as network failures or unexpected responses. How would you handle and communicate these errors effectively to the users? I'd implement error handling by wrapping potentially error-prone code with try-catch blocks. For network failures, I'd provide meaningful error messages to users and offer retry options. I'd also implement global error handling using Error Widget Builder for unhandled errors to prevent app crashes and improve user experience. You are building a mobile app that needs to be able to handle a large number of concurrent users. What are some things you would need to consider in terms of your app's architecture and implementation? Handling large number of concurrent users. When building a mobile app to handle a large number of concurrent users, several considerations come into play. Scalability. Choose a scalable architecture that can handle increased traffic. Consider serverless options, microservices, or cloud-based solutions. Load balancing. Implement load balancers to distribute user requests across multiple servers, preventing overloading of a single server. Caching. Implement caching mechanisms to reduce the load on the server and improve response times for frequently accessed data. Database optimization. Use efficient database designs and consider database sharding or partitioning to distribute data across multiple databases. Asynchronous processing. Utilize asynchronous processing for tasks that can be deferred, freeing up resources to handle more users simultaneously. CDN. Use Content Delivery Networks, CDNs, to distribute static assets and reduce server load, improving user experience. Monitoring and Analytics Implement robust monitoring and analytics tools to identify performance bottlenecks and make informed decisions for optimization. You are building a mobile app that needs to be able to access and display data from a remote server. What are some different ways you could implement this? Accessing and displaying data from a remote server to access and display data from a remote server in a mobile app, you have several options. REST API. Utilize a RESTful API to interact with the server, fetching data using HTTP requests and displaying it in the app's UI. GraphQL. Implement a GraphQL API for more flexible data retrieval, allowing clients to request specific data fields and reducing overfetching. WebSocket. Use WebSockets for real-time updates and bidirectional communication between the app and the server. Firebase Real-Time Database. Implement Firebase Real-Time Database for real-time synchronization of data between clients and the server. Offline Data. Implement local data storage using SQLite or NoSQL databases, allowing the app to display data even when offline. You are building a mobile app that needs to be able to interact with hardware peripherals, such as a camera or a GPS sensor. What are some different ways you could implement this? Interacting with hardware peripherals. Example. Camera, GPS. When building a mobile app that interacts with hardware peripherals, consider the following options. Camera. Camera plugin. Use a camera plugin, example, camera, image picker, to access the device's camera and capture photos or videos. Custom camera. Implement a custom camera interface using Flutter's camera APIs to have more control over the camera behavior. GPS location services. Location plugin. Utilize a location plugin, example, location, geolocator, to access the device's GPS capabilities and retrieve location data. Background location. Implement background location updates for scenarios like tracking user movement or providing location-based notifications. Hardware sensors. Platform channels. Use platform channels to create custom integrations with native code and access device-specific hardware APIs. Sensor plugins. Depending on the hardware sensor, example, accelerometer, gyroscope, use appropriate sensor plugins to retrieve sensor data. Bluetooth and hardware communication. Bluetooth plugins. Utilize Bluetooth plugins, example, Flutter Blue, to communicate with Bluetooth devices and peripherals. Custom native code. For complex hardware communication, implement custom native code using platform channels for direct interaction. You want to integrate Firebase services. Example, Firebase Authentication, Firestore, into your Flutter Android app. How would you set up Firebase Authentication and manage real-time data synchronization with Firestore? To set up Firebase Authentication in a Flutter Android app, add the Firebase Authentication dependency, configure it with your Firebase project settings. 
and then use Firebase APIs to handle authentication flows. To sync data with Firestore, add the Firestore dependency, initialize it, and use Firestore methods to manage real-time data synchronization. Example for Firebase Authentication, Flutter app with Android.